What is it specifically that we're gonna go with today? Four seam efficiency? Yeah. All right. We got work to do. You know, you already know what you're at, yeah? Yeah, arm side, you're gonna get more. So maybe even manipulate that with like your foot placement. You gotta try to go like far left. Cause that one even spun better, obviously. Oh, what, what grip are you using right now? Okay, so throw it right here. So we're 82%. I mean, I could give you some cues or like I can give you whatever, or you can just kind of self play around with some things. It doesn't necessarily mean like you need to be 100%. You want to just bridge the gap. But like that's how crucial like the timing is of everything, right? So like you, you were missed time there from your front foot and you went down to 76, so like the gap widened, right? So I always tell guys when we're like doing efficiency stuff, like take away as many variables as possible, whether it be like starting at the top or just like presetting hands, like whatever, take away as many variables and then work from there. And again, you don't have to do any of this, but like that's kind of where I decide like, all right, where's the missing piece, right? Is it the initial move tempo or is it something that as you like descend that there's just the timings off. So yeah, 86, shot up 10. Yeah, dude, we're there. We're 92. And then your arrows are like this close. So maybe that's a huge like teaching point for you is like it's that front foot, right? So the front foot's probably going slower than the hands going. And remember we talked about this in Tri-City where like you have such a simplified hand path that like it's gonna naturally get into your slot quicker. So then you just need to train this lead foot through space like to get in, get in sync with your arm. So like when we take you here and we go and we essentially initiate the tempo with your descending move instead of your ascend then descend, you naturally get back up. So do like three more and see if we can like replicate that. Just like a leg lift pause. Good. 85. Oh, 90. But like with your slot, so your axis is at right around two. So like the axis of the ball is gonna naturally initiate that horizontal break, right? Like what's your, what, I, what I talk about with you throwing up in the zone is your vertical approach. But if you can, like I said, bridge the gap and get more efficient and like be on time, then it's gonna naturally just play, I think. Does that feel better? from when you're pausing. Okay, so now you just kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. You just simplify it, right? So like now we just got to find out like without getting to that quote unquote balance point, like where's that, where's that tempo at? So you can either play around with like the one approach, which is like, all right, like let's tilt and load, see if that gives, your, gives you time and then play around with the other approach where it's like you do the opposite where you like, you lift and you start moving. Because again, your hand path is gonna allow you to increase your acceleration. But it's also gonna be a timing thing that's difficult. Eighty-one. Ninety-two. Funny like reading this, but then seeing the ball, like the ones you were like 70, it was kind of like this, right? And then those ones, even though like you flew open your arm side, like it still spun true. And what I mean by true is like the axis was which you threw the ball at your slot. Does that make sense? So like if your slot's at two, the ball should come out highly efficient at two o'clock. But if it's not, and it's like usually like if you go glove side, it's tilted a little bit. So let's slowly work towards like just hammering that, whatever you're doing, create feedback. Really good. 94. Well, that's what I tell a lot of guys is they, it's like a misconception of what time is. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm not efficient. I need to buy time. So then they actually like go slower, right? So like the coach's cue of get on time is terrible because the, the, the body's going to naturally like want to defy gravity and go slower, which is this, it's all going to get thrown off. So that's why I'm kind of teaching the opposite. Just get going. 90. Hey, I think honestly for you, like anything 85 and up is a win. So like, that's your goal, right? Like just pepper those numbers. And the cool thing is, is like, correct me if I'm wrong, but every time you've thrown the ball up, it's been higher. That was 94. 94. 
But you also got to think like you're going to be on a slope and the, the, you're also going to be throwing it like probably right here. Here. 85. 97. Throw your next three on the slope. When we're doing this efficiency stuff, I usually just do all the reps on the slope. Because like when we think about it, that's the timing that you need to master. 83. 83. Your slot actually drops when you're on the slope. Slot went to like 230. 81. Good. 90. Don't like over articulate all this. I'll just keep it simple. This was your last one. Mm -hmm. And you see like the yellow is your arm slot. Mm -hmm. See how it's like 215. Some of them were like this one 230. And this is your spin axis, right? 145 and 150 maybe. So like there's that little bit of disconnect. So when you were here, so when you're throwing on flat ground, see so your, your your arm slot was right around 230. These are your best ones on flat. And if you think about like the why behind it, because you have more space to go with your lead foot. Yeah. So the more space and your hands probably on the same time, but then the more space is either like dropping your slot, you're spinning, glove side's kind of going out because you have that more time. Yeah. So like that's why I think if we had more more time doing this stuff, we can experiment with like, all right, well like, we need to kill a little bit more time since we're on the, on the slope. Right. You were on the flat ground and I told you the two yeah. theories of like either like load, right. give more time or forward acceleration. Oh, uh, I was going with the forward. Yeah, so like I saw when you were on the mound, like you were kind of like stopping. really gathering, not stopping, but like you were really like, your tempo was slow. Let's just put it that way. That's what that's telling me. I think it's when you're slow with your tempo, your hand doesn't really know what to do. I think your handbrake timing is, is different on the mound versus like flat ground. We get going with our lower half, right? So if we lift and we start getting going, your upper half knows that it has to be pretty dang quick and pretty efficient, right? Like you have the, the arm action, like the, the arm path to be efficient. It's just like, all right, what time do we break? If you think about like just overall stimulus of your initial move, right? So if your initial move's a little bit slower, then your hand's gonna be like, oh, are we like going slow? And you accelerate so much as you descend that now that's where the disconnect is. Because if you pick up faster, you're gonna descend faster. But you already descend pretty quick, right? It's not that. It's just that initial move gathering and now we're gonna go. And it's just, I think it's just a little bit different ends of the ball. Instead of like where it was coming in like this on the flat ground, like pretty dang true to that two o'clock axis. It's kind of coming in like kind of just tilted and cutting. So what you want, and that's why I like looking at this stuff you can go to this 3d club so the 3d the blue is the way the ball's spinning uh -huh. and the yellow is where the ball is like released like your your arm slot right, right right so with a four seam fastball if we want to increase the efficiency number of that we want to give the ball better opportunity to move then we got to bridge the gap from those two arrows so like if we can release the ball with an axis that's true to the where your arm slot is that's why uh -huh. i say i just gave you the two o'clock right, number right. If we can go ball and arm slot at two, or even like relatively close, in my opinion, that's what's gonna increase your, your spin efficiency. All right. And that's to me just timing of the hand and the lead foot. And it's just making sure that your hand is in the right position as your front foot's coming down. Right. And that's why I said like the mound is where mechanics go to die. Right. So much stimulus out here. Yeah. And then we get on that and it's just like, wait, yeah. that's different. You know, you start going early with your trunk. Saw so like with the arm side elevated misses that you had on the mound, yeah. you have more time with the lead foot to anchor down. So what's gonna happen is your trunk should naturally start to leak early. Then you're susceptible to this thing kind of just flying out rather than keeping this trunk locked in. Boom, now we anchor down. Now we can utilize all of this rotational energy boom and we're on time high ground here we're anchored down mound we're there yeah. it's just that but what that does is if your hands here on a flat ground like you're positioned accordingly here but on a slope it goes whoop. see how that my upper body like turns a little bit right. and we start to leak just a little bit that's why I said on a mound especially you either do one of two things you you increase your forward move and just start getting your body accelerating forward or you delay your handbrake but the thing that I don't like about delaying your handbrake is it's a totally different like thing that I fear that your hand's going to be confused on like, wait, we're late. And then it's going to, you know, again, I get how it is when you're like on a game mound and you know, like, you know, there's a guy in a box, like the last thing you want to do is speed up and rush. You kind of have this kind of subconscious notion of like, all right, like relax, gather, you know, really feel your drive leg, you know, and all that stuff. And it's about like, all right, let's 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 find a window thing, a cue, something that works. And then now we have that and we can do that every single day to build those motor pattern, right? 